Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today I'm going to show you how to build a collapsible, reusable row greenhouse out of half inch PVC pipe. And this is a 10 foot section of half inch PVC pipe and each 10 foot section costs $3.53. This is a two millimeter plastic drop cloth that measures nine feet by 12 feet. And that costs, um, I think about $3.50. You have a bag of 10 half inch PVC 90 degree elbow joints. This bag was $1.80. Here's another bag of half inch PVC joints. It's a bag of 10. That was also, you know, about two bucks. And you can see there's a place for three joints there. And these are three quarter inch and half inch. PVC, PVC joint pieces and I'll show you how I'm going to use them. This is what's going to make it collapsible. And you also need a roll of duct tape, duct tape which is about four dollars. You need a way to cut your pipe. You can um, use strong clippers or you could use a hacksaw if you have that, that I had at home. The materials for everything here turned out to be about twenty-five dollars and you can use a lot of these in the next one you build. So the overall cost for this just for the pieces when it's all said and done is about $20. And I'll show you how to build this row greenhouse. Now you have to do a little bit of math uh, when you cut the PVC pipe. I had three 10 foot sections and I'm building my um, collapsible greenhouse to fit into a raised bed that I have that actually measures about 21 inches wide. Um, so here are my dimensions. It's gonna be seven feet long. It's gonna be 20 and a half inches wide and it's going to stand uh, about two feet tall. The, the height of my greenhouse is going to be three feet but six to twelve inches of that is going to sink into the ground. You have to do a little bit of math. So I had three ten-foot sections of PVC pipe so I cut out two seven-foot sections that left me two three-foot sections to give the greenhouse height and then I had to cut out the other pipe into two three-foot pieces. That's another six feet gone and then that left me with four feet. These pieces could have been 24 inches if you want, if they'll fit into your garden uh, raised bed, but they won't fit into mine. So I had to cut them down to 20 and a half inches. But you have to do a little bit of planning so that you don't underbuy or overbuy the length of your PVC pipe. Now that the sections are cut, um, I'm going to assemble the frame. And just to recap real quick, I had three 10 foot pieces of PVC. I cut them into uh, four three foot sections, two 20 and a half inch sections, but you could have kept this 24 inches if it works in your garden bed, and two seven foot sections. The first thing you want to do is just pull out the 90 degree PVC joints and you are going to first put on this joint here. This is three and, a, uh, three and a quarter inches here. So it's bigger than the pipe and that's what you want. You want it to spin. This side is half an inch. Then you put on the elbow joint. Put in your 20, 20 and a half inch piece. Slide that back down. I'm going to put in the other seven foot section. Slide in your three and a quarter inch piece there. Put on the elbow joint. Put in that piece. I'll do the other end off the video, but I wanted to show you the collapsible part of it. The three foot piece is going to go right onto here. And let me put one down here too. And when you raise it, see if I can do this on video. Well, let's see. I'll just do one side. When you raise it, you're going to see that this moves. You'll put this in about six inches to a foot, and then your frame will just stand up on there like this. And you can also slide this up and down if you need to move it. I'm going to put this all together and then I'll give you 
uh, a video view of what it looks like then. This is the basic assembled frame. You're going to have to use your imagination a little bit. It's upside down and I can't totally raise it in here because the support is going to come, this is the bottom end, this side is going to go 6 to 12 inches in the ground and because it's flexible or because it's mobile down at the bottom you could slide this up and down and put it where you need it and because it's loose I can't stand it up right now without putting it into the ground but you can see all four three foot sections are in and I will sink those posts about six to twelve inches into the ground and that will give the frame the stability and will be the base for me to put the plastic drop cloth on. This is also a basic setup. I haven't used one of the joints yet and I'm going to show you how you can use them. You don't need to use them if you don't want to, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these seven foot sections in half and add a joint to them and I'll show you what that will be used for. Now these T-joints can be used depending on the size that you make your frame you're going to have a lot of plastic on top and when it rains the water is going to pull on there. So you use these T-joints by basically deciding where on your frame you want to place them. Just cut the pipe, join these and the knees will move and you're going to put in probably about another 12 inch piece of half inch PVC and you can bend that and that will raise the roof piece of your greenhouse and that will cause the water to run off of it. And I did it right here. You can see this was only about a six inch piece. I don't have any more PVC pipe, but I'll buy a couple more pieces. But once you cut the pipe, as you can see it separates, just join it, and then this piece will bend. And you can turn it up, turn it down, turn it whatever angle you want, and that will prop up the roof, uh, the top piece of your greenhouse, and that will let water run off. And you can use that if you want to. Okay, here's the plastic sheet that's going to go on top of the PVC frame. You could actually stop here if you wanted to. You don't have to do the cutting that I'm going to do to kind of fit it to the frame. Um, it would work fine if you just sank your frame into the ground, put the plastic uh, paint drop cloth over top, and then just secured the plastic down around the frame. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this so that it fits a little more snugly to the frame, but you don't have to do that step. You do have to make sure, again, you do some math. The uh, length, or the, well, in this way, the height of the frame is seven feet, and the legs, so to speak, are three feet. But I'm going to really sink those down a good 12 inches, so the height of my greenhouse from the ground up is going to be about two feet. The drop cloth is nine feet wide, and it's 12 feet in a total height when you look at it this way. So what you have to make sure is that your drop cloth has enough room on this side to drop down the side of your greenhouse and secure to the ground and same with the sides. So when I sink this a foot into the ground my greenhouse will stand two feet high and that will give me enough room to cover the top, the sides, and the opposite sides. Hopefully that makes sense. But you just have to kind of think of it that when you drop the cloth on top, you want to make sure the cloth will reach the ground so that you can seal it down to the earth and your cold air doesn't get in. And again, you could stop here, but I'm going to show you how to cut this plastic, um, duct tape it, and make it a little more snug. But again, you could skip that step. And I promise it'll all make sense when you see it go into the garden and get inverted into the right way. All right, so again, this drop cloth is 12 feet high, 9 feet wide. My frame is 7 feet long, and I'm going to cut it. Again, you don't have to. You could just drop this over the top, and that would work uh, pretty well. From here to here, there's 28 inches, so on both sides, I have 28 inches. If you come up here, I have about 44 inches on the left and right side. What I'm going to do, as you can see, I cut out, well, I marked out a rectangle there 
with an X in it. I'm going to cut out where my foot is, this whole section. So I'm going to go right up that line and right down the other line. And you want to cut it so that the corner is about, I don't know, three inches away from this corner. You don't want to cut in that close. You'll run the risk of making it too tight when you duct tape these sides together and it won't fit. So this is your uh, sort of security gap to make sure you don't make it too tight. I'm going to cut these out and I'll show you how I secure them. You'll notice I cut out the rectangles from each corner of the drop cloth and I'll explain that bamboo to you in a second. So that you end up having your plastic sheet look like that and basically what you're going to do is you're going to lift these flaps up and you're going to duct tape the seams where they join. You may need somebody to help you with that. Also, there's the extra plastic. Plastic. I just fold that up and put it in a Ziploc bag and you can use that to repair holes. And again, if you don't want to go through this fitting process, you don't have to. You could just drop the drop cloth over the frame. The technique for building the frame is the same if you become a little more elaborate and fit it or you just drop a drop cloth over it. I happen to have a glass vase that just happened to work for this and it goes right into the corner. You could use a cereal box and probably another pair of hands or anything that gives you a tall 90 degree angle. And basically all you're going to do is lift the plastic sheet up here and if someone was helping me they would hold that end and then you'd lift the other side here right against the frame like that and then you just run a piece of duct tape down the whole uh, height or length of the jar of the um, vase and that creates your seal and I'm going to do that and I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is how high, what's the height of your frame. I again have three foot um, PVC pipe that's going to give my frame the height, but I'm going to sink it down 12 inches. So I don't want to duct tape the full 28 inches. I want to duct tape to 24 inches and that will be just enough to drop down um, from the top of the frame, which is on the bottom, but it'll get inverted from the top of the frame to exactly where the uh, posts go into the ground. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over like that and just duct tape the top. And then where my finger is, you can slide in a garden stake the whole length of this plastic and that will provide the weight to keep it down and you can lift it up easily. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let me show you the flap first before I seal the edges. All you do is again, make sure that you're going to have enough plastic from here to the top to cover your frame. But once you figure that out, you're just folding the plastic up, duct taping it. I'm going to put another piece of duct tape right up here, but three pieces of duct tape. And then you can just slide a garden stake through the middle and that will be enough weight to keep the flap down and you'll have the sides of your greenhouse weighted down. And you can easily pick them up to get into your, your produce or whatever you want to do inside the frame there. Okay, the next thing you want to do is build the seam and you should get somebody to help you with this. It'll make it a lot easier. I've already peeled out a two foot piece of duct tape because if you remember, I said my side is going to be about two feet in length. So all you do is lift the seam up and put it right against the corner. Hold that one there. Quickly, you just take two pieces of duct tape and put it together. One at the top, one at the bottom. Right up here is where the stick goes in. You want to make sure you don't duct tape there, but duct tape below it. Hold on to that. And then you take your two foot piece, start it at the bottom, go up one side 
of the vase or whatever box you're using and then tape it to the other side and just tear off where it comes up. That will seal your seam. I'm also going to put another piece of duct tape along here and along here and do it for the rest of it. Then I'm going to take this all outside and show you how to put it together. This is why I built the new greenhouse raised bed garden frame. This was made out of saran wrap and I did a video and it worked really well until we had the hurricane yesterday. Um, and obviously saran wrap can't take 60 mile an hour winds. It did what I wanted it to do. I think if we didn't have the hurricane, I would have just finished out with this. Um, but anyway, I built a new collapsible, reusable greenhouse row frame. And the reason that I made it seven feet is because I want it to fit, I want to fit it right into this space. I'm going to assemble it and I'll show you what it looks like. So here's my new greenhouse. It's collapsible, it's reusable, it's made from a two millimeter uh, plastic paint sheet and PVC, PVC pipe. And let me just show you a couple of things. Um, right here where I put the T-joint in to raise the roof, obviously I'm going to need a bigger piece of plastic. But I'm also looking at seven feet. That's a little bit too wide. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll put in a two, two and a half foot post here, turn it down, and then do one on the other side. And that will provide some support. For the rainwater, I'm actually just going to poke a couple of holes in it and I'll let the water drip right into the garden. I'm not sure why I didn't think of that before. Again, this is the collapsible reusable greenhouse. It fits my raised bed. In here, I put um, some pieces of wood so that that will weight it down. And if I need to get into it, I just raise it up and I can take out and take care of what I need to. And I can just drop it down again, fold it over, and seal it up. The seam worked. It's two feet long. I can also get in from the side if I need to. Put in a piece of wood. That will weight it down. But overall, for $20, maybe an hour's worth of my time, I can uh, take these greens through the frost and hopefully now uh, into mid-December or so. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Um, I now have 100 garden videos. Thanks.